So today I'm going to talk about um, my research area, which is human memory. And I think when most people think about memory, they think about remembering things, like either remembering a personal event in their life, like their first kiss or their 16th birthday, or remembering actual facts that they knew or once knew, like who starred in the movie Psycho. That's um, explicit memory. And how we test it in a laboratory is typically we present participants with a list of words or pictures, and then um, after they see it, they have a little break, and then we ask them, write down everything that you saw earlier. So it's this conscious recollection of the list that they saw earlier. I don't typically do explicit memory. What I look at is implicit memory, which is more unconscious processing. So with implicit memory, what we're looking at is the benefit of prior experience on your current behavior. So some of you might actually lock the bathroom door when you take a shower, even though you're the only one in the house. And you might be doing this because you did see the movie Psycho and you're thinking of Norman Bates stabbing the woman, but you're not consciously thinking about that. So when you lock the door, you're really not accessing a conscious memory, but your behavior has changed as a result of that movie. How we do that in a laboratory, how we access that implicit memory, is we present people with a list of items, either pictures or words, and then after a small break, we present them with an unrelated task, usually a list of cues. So we could give them a word stem completion, where they're given the first three letters from words and ask to fill them in with the first word they think of. Or we could give them trivia questions, which are just a series of trivia questions, and we ask them to answer them with the first word that comes to mind. Unbeknownst to the participants, however, at least, or at minimum, half the items can be answered with the words or pictures they saw earlier. So we're not asking them to remember the items at all, but yet we're measuring, are they going to use those items that they saw earlier to answer these questions? So, for example, if they had seen a word like scarf, we could give them a series of word stems, and embedded in that would be S-C-A blank. We would measure whether participants who saw the word scarf would write scarf more often than they would write something like scarce or scary. Um, or we could give them a trivia question like, what do you wear to keep warm in the winter? And what we would measure is, are participants who saw the word scarf more likely to say scarf than to say hat or to say jacket? This benefit in performance that we see as a result of seeing the words earlier, even though we're not asking you to remember the items, is called priming. And that's how we measure implicit memory. Why I think implicit memory is interesting, and I think a lot of people do, is variables behave differently on implicit tasks than on explicit tasks. So for example, um, a variable like aging. Most people think as you get older that your memory kind of declines. I've had that experience myself, and inevitably so will you. However, it's not universal that your memory will decline. Typically, we find that younger adults outperform older adults on explicit memory tasks where conscious recollection is needed. So we say, here's a list of words, and then we ask you, please write down everything you remember seeing. Younger adults will write down more words than older adults. However, sometimes when presented with things like word stems and not consciously asked to recall the items, they're given an implicit task, older adults behave the same as younger adults. They get as many of the target items that we're looking for as the younger adults get. The results are inconsistent with implicit measures, which really becomes interesting because um, it leads people to want to know what makes the old adults sometimes remember these items unconsciously, yet other times not, and what makes them sometimes remember the items unconsciously, but when consciously asked to recall the items, they're, they're not able to. That's where my research has been going, looking at the effects of this unconscious processing on aging.